I'm old enough to where when I was a child, there wasn't rock and roll. Rock and roll kind of burst on the scene, not really overnight, but looking back, it kind of seems like it did. It's like by 56, there was, there was this undeniable phenomenon called rock and roll, and, and, and I was an adolescent, the perfect age to kind of get my life ruined and my mind blown by hearing all of that stuff just at the perfect time. I, I think I first got exposed to it at little parties, little dance parties in converted garages. My next door neighbor was a, a year older than me. She was in the seventh or eighth grade and she would drag me to these parties and I didn't want to go because I, I still think girls were kind of icky you know mm -hmm. but then uh, she would make me go to these parties and and they would play these 45s that they had the kids are a little older than me and and uh, and she'd make me dance with her and and it was a lot of doo-wop stuff and probably some kind of corny white pop stuff at the time but the kids were older and they were starting to get into music and and so I would she'd make me dance with her and and I, 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 that's probably the first time I was ever exposed to any black music because black music wasn't really on the radio unless it was Nat Cole or the Mills Brothers or something pop like that for the adults. So I started, I started associating early R&B like that with girls and touching them and dancing. Well, well, maybe they're not so icky after all, you know. seems like almost overnight there were Fast Domino and Little Richard and Elvis and Gene Vincent and Buddy Holly and all of these people just all of a sudden out of nowhere there was all of this stuff on the radio. You didn't really hear blues on the radio except for there was this one station in Dallas called WRR which was actually a city owned station in the daytime. They played adult music, big band stuff, wasn't top 40, it was big band stuff. But at night they had a show called uh, Cat's Caravan. So I'd go to sleep listening to people like Lazy Lester and Lightning Slim and all this great uh, blues and R&B. first couple of years of rock and roll I didn't really think about trying to play it or anything and but my friend and I would go to uh, uh, th there was a teen dance and I would spend the night at his house on Friday nights and we'd walk up to the shopping center in Castle Linda there in Dallas and, and and just sit there and watch the older kids dance they would drive up their mercs and stuff but we'd walk up there and just sit there and watch them dance and they would spin 45s one week and the next week they'd have a band that would alternate like that and so anyway so we would hear these bands and just sit there and listen and and one night there was a band and it was just three of them it was a guy playing piano Odell Booker a guy playing drums Barry Wallace and the guitar player uh, Don Hosick and we were sitting there listening to them it wasn't the first time we'd ever heard music but but there was something about that night they were just kind of playing blues and R&B stuff, which is what most just little combos played at the time. And and we were looking at this guitar player and he didn't sing. He just stood there and he had a Stratocaster and he had he looked kind of like Elvis, had cool hair and sideburns and just stood there real cool and played some Stratocaster, which I didn't know what it was at the time. But my friend and I looked at each other and we said, we got to learn how to do that.
back in those days, rock and roll and everything was so simple that if you had a, after you had a few lessons and learned some bar chords and some open strings and stuff, you could actually play along with records. If you were serious enough about it to kind of investigate what you were doing and analyze it and think about it, you could play along with the records because, like, you know, they were, some of them had four chords in them, you know, and you had to look around for that fourth chord, but once you found it, then you could play it, you could play along with a lot of records just by not knowing all that much. But now I didn't have a guitar, and, and my mother and my sister and me went down to Elm Street again at a pawn shop. And we went and I walked out of this pawn shop with a with the Fender Stratocaster and a Silvertone amp and and um, I mean I I got home and I opened up this case. I mean I knew what it was, of course. I mean I I was going, I have a Stratocaster. It was like a 16-year-old kid getting a 59 Cadillac convertible, you know, when he turned 60. It was it was it was a, it was kind of beat up and had a little rust on it and a couple of knobs were gone. But I had I who couldn't even really play, had a, a Fender Stratocaster, which was unbelievable. So, I, I mean, I, I mean, that I still get kind of affected when I even think of that. Mm -hmm. 